Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nicole Smith. I'm one of the recruiting supervisors from DART Container. And I'm going to offer you a little bit of information about DART and the history, and certainly my other colleagues that are with me are going to speak and give you a little bit of perspective on their jobs that are in our IT department. So DART is located in Mason, Michigan, and we're a family business, and the DART family still owns our company, which is kind of rare given the size of what we are. We have over 15,000 employees. You'll see a little bit of our history there and how we started. Um, currently, we had an acquisition about three years ago, a solo cup, and most folks on campus will recognize the solo name. But if you see through, a little bit more of our um, group is focused here today on our operations. So we're a vertically integrated company. And what that means is that we try to do as much in-house as makes a good business sense for us. So, as a person looking at an organization to join, vertical integration to you is going to mean that there's a lot of resources in-house and a lot of people to gain and seek knowledge from. As a new person coming out of school in the spring, it's going to offer you a lot more latitude with your development career-wise because we have so many different positions and areas in-house. So it's a really unique organization. We don't do a huge amount of outsourcing typically. We do have a large amount of SAP work right now, so there are a lot of consultants on campus. But our goal is to bring that in-house and support that completely too. I mentioned how large we are. We have 15,000 employees. Our Mason campus has about 2,000 employees on it right now. On that campus, it also houses our wellness center, a cafe, and actually a huge amount of people right now in and out with engineering, business operations, and HR folks there as well. If you look at the slide, you'll see these are a lot of our U.S. domestic locations. Our corporate headquarters is in Mason. You'll see that the Lake Forest location over in Illinois is a very popular location for a lot of our IT opportunities as well. That was formerly the Solo headquarters. All the other dots on that map show production facilities or distribution locations. So quite a large amount in the U.S. The next slide I'm going to show here will highlight a little bit more of our international presence that we have. So we're a global company located kind of in your backyard here in Michigan. I mentioned a little bit about our customers in the solo cup there. If you've ever been to a McDonald's, a Chick-fil-A, or certainly a Speedway, Circle K or Target, those are the customers that we work with. So our products might be in your hand one, two, three times a day, and you might not even know it. If you look at a cup and see the Dart name on there, that's great. You'll look at a cup and might not see the Dart name on it, and it's still our cup. You'll notice the McDonald's up there, and I will ruin a surprise for you guys. We put the labels on the Monopoly game pieces on the cup, so you can't win Monopoly as a Dart employee. I know. Did you get me something? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, our engineering department actually worked with uh, developing the adhesive portions and how it's put onto the labels. And McDonald's really keeps that under lock and key, and they know exactly where the pieces are, even in our facility, and the cups and where they ship. So those are some of the unique opportunities you have. You might not think that something that you're getting your salad at lunch in or maybe a cup of coffee or tea to go really has that big of an impact, but we do. And a lot of the customers are looking for innovative ideas and solutions, and our products see that to our infrastructure as well. I'm going to introduce Lisa. Lisa's going to talk a little bit about her background as well as her position at DART and some of the opportunities she's experienced there as well. Great. <laughs> okay, so I'm Lisa. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about some different things that you won't hear from Tyler and Paul because they come from a more technical background and I'm the total opposite. So you're going to hear a little bit about my experiences and what I do at DART. Um, near and around SAP, but not directly in SAP. So if you like SAP, but don't necessarily want to work with T-codes all day or day, you can be interested in some of the stuff that I do. So a little bit of background of what I have done. Um, I got my bachelor's degree from a small school in central Illinois. My bachelor's degree was in English literature, so definitely not IT related. And I got my master's degree in tech writing, which is kind of how I got into the IT world. Um, in tech writing, I'm not sure if you guys are required to take tech writing classes or not, but it's about understanding technical materials and relating it into easy to understand language for a variety of audiences. 
So I really get to dig into some of the technical things and try to understand it, but then I have to filter to understand what the end users need to know based on the technical material. So it's a lot of work with people, it's about understanding people, a lot of hand holding. Um, my first position in IT was actually in training and um, back in the day, <laughs> I worked with Oracle products, not SAP, and I was um, helping with their rollout of their Oracle product on campus. Um, so I have worked with a lot of people over the years. Um, some of the stuff that I get to do now, well, I guess I should talk about. When I started at Dart, I was a technical writer. So um, I was doing straight up tech writing all the time. And um, part of the department that I worked with um, dealt with transport and transport management. And that was kind of how I got into the SAP world because I had to understand about releasing, about return codes, all of that kind of stuff. And I dug into that, and that is how I managed to get myself into more SAP world kind of thing. So um, I was actually promoted to change management, and um, I don't know that you guys know what that means. So I'll talk a little bit about what I get to do as a change management analyst. Um, so the most important thing about change management is understanding who approves things, why they approve it, and assigning responsibility within an IT department. So making sure that the people who are approving things know what they're looking for when they approve it, and having checks and balances so you can guarantee that they're actually doing the work that they say that they're doing. So a lot of the work that I do is surrounding process. So understanding how you get from point A to point B and making sure that everything's working properly along the way. So given that I work around process, um, I get to do a lot of training still. Um, we just rolled out Charm, which is the change management tool and manages our transports throughout our landscape. And so a lot of what I do is working with end users on um, making sure they're getting the process correct. So I'm in this step, who do I go to next to get the approval that I need? Um, I also get to spend a lot of time looking for efficiency and effectiveness within our department, um, not just in SAP, but on a much larger scale than um, just the SAP world. So I get to think through and document what I think are ways that we could be better at what we do. So I get a very wide range of things um, that I get to do. I get to dig a little bit into the SAP world to understand the technical aspects, but I also get to work with people and process it. And um, change management is a very visible position. So um, I know the directors all by name. They all know who I am. I am known as Mass Email Lisa because I'm constantly communicating to our department about changes within our department. So if you're really interested in working with people, change management is a great way to get into that kind of stuff because you do get the technical aspect because you need to understand what's happening. But you also get um, the people aspect so you get to talk about, talk with people and about people and help you people. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Um, I guess one thing I didn't talk about was problem solving. So especially when you're rolling out a new tool like SAP or even a new, a new tool within SAP like Charm, um, you're going to come across issues that you may not necessarily know how to deal with. So a lot of what I do is on the spot problem solving, um, what's the best way to deal with this? From an auditing perspective, um, what do we need to make sure we do to meet our checks and balances? Um, so I get to um, do a lot of hands-on work um, in the moment when everything's really crazy and you're trying to figure out what's going on. So um, that's kind of what I do, but I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about why I like DART and um, one of the reasons I was attracted to DART. When I was first interviewing for the position at DART that brought me here, um, because I was in Illinois before, so I was actually, I moved up here to Michigan for this position. One of the things that I really liked about DART was that they have a very high retention rate for their employees. So people tend to come here and then they stay here the rest of their lives, which as, um, as you guys are looking for positions when you go into the work world, that's very, very rare, especially in IT, um, because people tend to move around a lot. So the fact that DART um, has a really high retention rate for their employees um, made me really interested in working here. And one of the things once I got to DART um, that I learned is that if you're a go-getter, which I really am, and you really care about what you do and you have a knack for learning and you pick up things quickly, um, your possibilities are endless at DART. Um, because I started as a tech writer, which in the IT world is a very lowly position. And it doesn't really mean much in terms of the technical work that you do. But because of my involvement with transport management, I was able to move up very quickly within six months of being hired um, into a position with a lot more responsibility. 
And um, with my work with the directors, I um, they have a lot of confidence in what I do so, and kind of told me that I could do anything that I wanted within IT. So if you are interested in IT and um, you're not sure exactly where you want to start or where you want to go, Dart has been a really great place for me for that because I had no idea what I was getting into when I came here, but I've learned so much and I've had so much opportunity given to me by being at Dart. So that's my skill. <laughs> <laughs>
possibly grow to a management level, as well as working in a, a really technical area with like basis and stuff like that. So all I can say is take those classes with Professor McBride and basis and I about and learn all you can because it really pays off and when you're taking configuration, just pay attention because I really wish I was studying all day long. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Um, when am I going to get my cut? <laughs> well, I know we talked about this. It's 15% of the year's annual salary. Just remember, Chris, he's now an expert with solution manager. Yeah, I know. Never mind. We may take it out and trade. Right? <laughs> we'll always take it out and trade. Right. Um, but I do have a serious question. Yeah. Do you have a do you have a transport landscape for solution manager? So do you have a dev task? Yeah, so we have we have a dev quality and production landscape for solution manager. So we have one for ECC, PW, Bob J, all those APO, but then we also have a hierarchy for solution manager. So we use LMDB to configure those logical components and get it on the right path for when we use charge. Yeah, can you make me look twitchy because <laughs> you're in doing configuration and stuff? It's well, yeah, no, it's all in you solution manager. The way it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Correct. Tyler? Why do you like working at Dart? Why do I like looking at working at Dart? Watch, and then next time I look at my, my watch or I look at a meeting, it's 4 o'clock, and I'm just like digging in on projects that are fun, you know? I mean, when you take those exams with Professor Tracy, I know they're tough, but I mean, in the long run, it's pretty fun. Like, you're doing some interesting stuff, and when that's your whole life, I don't know, it's pretty rewarding at the end of the day. You're like, wow, I did, I did all this. I did it. The, the day's done already. I don't even know what happened to it. And then you go home and just repeat. So it, it's, it's really fulfilling. So I don't know. like my exam? Do you like my art? I did like my exam. script 
and part of the like <coughs> me being vertically integrated makes it a lot of fun. Because my most recent script was uh, take a tool, move it to, from one plane to another, use that tool in producing a raw material. So then it gets moved back into raw materials, and then you use that raw material that you produce. We produce our own raw materials to produce a cup that you sell, and then return the packaging to cupcake. So it's a really like large end-to-end -end scenario. We get to work with a lot of different teams, like figuring out how to do it. There's a lot of changes that go through, so I'll be halfway through and be like, hey, we actually don't use that key code anymore. We use a custom key code. So I get to do a lot of things like within SAP, like your key code transactions, and I work with the process team really closely. Once those are broken down, uh, the main focus of that is to do automation on it. So right now, Dart's currently building a key code automation library so that we can string key codes together into scenarios. Uh, it's mostly used for regression testing now, so like <laughs> test scenarios that we do, like every single test cycle that we have, like every single little change that goes in pre-production, we need to like make sure we can do the basic, like we need to make sure we can sell stuff. So we have to test that every time we do something. So we design automated scripts for that so that people don't have to run. Um, it gets a little confusing when you're trying to run automated scripts with your different landscapes and something works in quality but doesn't work in like our like our staging area, so it, it gets a little complex. Um, basically the way we do it is we use a program called SAP Pal and it works kind of on the front end with a program called QTP and basically what it does is it runs through a key code and SAP Pal helps QTP recognize the object on an SAP screen and basically just run the transaction like you normally would and it converts it into um, a bunch of components in HPQC, which is a quality center. And those components are each like little tidbits of code in UTP that run automated processes like click a button and set text. Um, so once we have that, we like roll them all up into one key code. So now we have key code automated, and then we take all those little automated key codes and we string them together into test sets. So the idea behind that is, is that if I go in and I automate Migo, in theory, if someone else has a scenario where they use Migo, they should just be able to take my automated component and store the scenario. Um, currently, right now, Dart's got roughly 250 key codes fully developed for automation. Uh, that's individual key codes, so like we'll have, I think right now we have 10 or 11 different versions of Migo based on what kind of actions you're doing in it. Um, and a lot of those are also custom transactions, so Z transactions that Dart developed. Um, I love my job, like I said, we pretty much say these are the scripts you're going to do, Tyler. We'll see you in two weeks, hopefully you got it done. I get to set my cube and I get to just kind of do my own thing. I get to do a lot of problem solving. I learn a ton about the business because like I said, I'm constantly, I'll run up to the SEM team, run back to OCC, run back to SEM, run back and forth trying to figure out how exactly this works. So it's super rewarding work for me to do. I'm, I'm never bored, like Paul says. I look at my watch, I get there at 7.30. So I look at the clock at 7 30, I look back at 7 35, and I'm like, all right, coffee's done, now I get to go to work. Um, yeah, and I look back and it's 4 o'clock and I'm out the door, so it's absolutely amazing work. Um, I like working at Dark because they're really, really, really into keeping you there, and they want, they really care about the fact that you're a person and not just an employee. And they realize that you can't just come into a cute farm, sit down for eight hours, and then leave. So we just put in a brand new facility where I work. Um, real nice cube area. They got stand desk, which I say that I use all the time, but I don't. Um, we're right next to like brand new cafeteria. It serves really good food. It's kind of like the cafeterias here on campus. We have a gym right next door to it with a ping pong table and a basketball arcade machine that I never use at work. Um, we do basketball league, volleyball, we play bags out in court during the summer. So it's a really cool, like, you feel like you're at a small startup with 150 people until you walk outside and you realize there's like 2,000 people on campus and you're in a multi-billion dollar company. So yeah, love my job, love what I do. I think for me, that's all I really got. Yeah. So you have to give, you and Paul, let's go ahead and have to give all these uh, students uh, <laughs> what advice would you give them? Um, how many of them are, how many of you are in your junior, senior, maybe graduation in the next two years? 
I kind of talked about it earlier, but I mean, truly, when you're in class, it, you just got to stop thinking of it as a course that you're trying to get an A. You got to sit there and actually absorb what's going on, not worry about getting 100% on the test, but actually understanding what's going on. When Professor McBride comes into class, all he says about something really cool, get into it and learn what he's talking about, because it probably is really cool to help you in the future. Yeah, if you just listen, you get it. <laughs> yeah, I would say, yeah, it definitely gets to be a point especially when I'm on and dark, where you realize that what we do is actually super cool. Um, and if you don't think, you don't feel that way about your work, then it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long work day if you don't come into work and you're really excited about your, what you're doing, it's actually really cool. My biggest thing, especially if you're like a junior or a sophomore, is that when I was a first time go around senior, I, I did my senior year twice, um, I just signed my IS major because this meeting had pizza. <laughs> and I thought, I'll do that, and my Dr. Miller kind of made me do it. Um, so I came here because they had pizza, and then I just got really interested in it. And instead of just being like really interested in paying attention to class, which is good, I like talked to Professor Tracy a lot, I talked to Professor McBride a lot, I got really involved in kind of what like Central was doing. Central does have an amazing program. Um, I got really involved with this class, with this group, which is a huge thing. Turk 10 obviously really helped me because I deal with Picos like all day. Um, I got a job on campus with Professor Tracy doing automation. It's, it was kind of like, like a, almost an internship for what I'm doing now. So just get really involved and do more than just come to campus, post your configuration, and go home and call your friend who is paying attention for help. Yeah. I would also say, when you're like applying for an internship or job, I wouldn't, just don't be intimidated by what the job title is. Because when I got this position, I was a PMO intern. And they were telling me I was going to be the solution manager, expert in a champion of change management. I was like, oh, you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I went and I took the turf 10 and I knew everything about T codes and all that stuff. And now, I mean, I'm working my way up to being a solution manager expert. I love it. If you read it, you see the title, you think it sounds cool, go ahead and give it a shot. I mean, it can't hurt. Uh, I honestly think you should consider it. We're going to have, uh, so we have a technically a fourth, uh, fourth member, so we're going to have uh, Nate talk a little bit about his internship, since he just got done with one. Nate, what team did you work on? I was a member of the deployment team. <laughs> My experience at DART began on June 1st of December. Uh, from the moment I got there, I felt welcomed, and I felt the family environment, and they were constantly helping me out with the transition process from classes to a working environment and a professional working environment. I had worked with a team of six other members. Uh, one was an employee of Deloitte. I got a great taste of what all aspects are incorporated in large implementations. Most of my job consisted of coordinating the implementation projects and coordinating the tasks involved with the implementations finding out predecessors, meeting with functional teams to build the project plan and execute them throughout the project life. I had a wonderful experience though. The campus was beautiful. You go out to lunch, take a walk, eat at the cafe. The work environment is wonderful. <coughs> but the, the, the employees there are just as great. They took the time to get to know me, not only as just an intern, but as a person. I can say I made friends there and the people that I will talk to again or speak with for the rest of my life. It was a really great experience. They helped me learn. They got me involved with what each of all employees were doing. The team, each team member took the time out of their day to involve me in their work and to help me with mine as well. And if you're interested in interning at a company in the summer, I definitely suggest dropping an application at Dart. And, uh, that's all I have to say. And as far as like the small business, go ahead. How many interns are you looking for? We don't have our internships posted just yet, but um, they should be coming up in the first week. So that's probably okay. typical. So they should be out here by the next time we're here in February. Generally, how many interns do you hire in some? Across your organization or in IT? In IT. Um, I want to say probably a dozen or so, maybe. Did they go through the uh, screen process of what you Yeah, so I actually was going to talk about how to apply. And I that uh, 
call in a great point. And, and what your expectations are? Yeah. What you used for a criteria? Yeah. Pretty much our recruitment process is fairly black and white for a person coming into it. Um, start that job in their site to apply. Do not be intimidated by the fancy titles you might see out there. Please apply. And the best advice I can give you as somebody looking for an opportunity in an organization is apply to anything and everything that interests you slightly. If you don't meet the requirements, you don't know. The position requirements might change and you can be considered. But if you don't put your a resume is really all we need and profile in our system in, we can't consider you. Typically an interview process for my IT group will involve applying, putting your resume in, and maybe a brief phone interview, um, depending on the hire, if it's a direct hire full-time position, you might do a phone interview with the hiring manager, and then come out to our campus and have an interview with the team and actually see the setting where you're working. For interns, they'll often have you either a phone interview, WebEx interview, or maybe come on campus. So there's one interview in the process for that. Um, I would say have your resume ready, profile. Job alerts are key. So you know as soon as a position is posted, you can set up one for an internship. You can also set up one for IT. It gives you a sense of kind of some of the jobs you have out there and read those requirements and keep in mind what you're doing in your class and how it applies. One of my other pieces of big advice for students, besides applying to everything and anything that interests you, is to take credit for the work that you're doing in your classes. Take credit for those team assignments you have. Take credit for the extracurricular projects that you work on in competitions. Because that is what's really going to shine through in the work experience you have. While it might not be a true kind of job in the sense, but it would work nonetheless. And take credit for it. Um, our slide here is start that job. This is our screen right now. HR is actually going through our SAT fun times now, so this will all be changing. So I'm getting the taste of what it's like. Um, if you click on our corporate sales and look at YouTube area here, you can search the drop down tool here and you can do um, internships or you can do information technology and search for full time opportunities. It will ask you to create a profile as most sites do. I feel like you need a profile for everything from ordering a pizza now to applying for a job. Click to the next slide, it gives you a little bit of a sense. It's really just your email and password. The next page after that is asking a little bit about your personal contact information. You will receive a response once you apply, so it's not going to be dropped off and left off in space. So if you're questioning whether your resume went through or not, Feel free, uh, you guys can have my cards, there's cards in the gift bag that we brought for you guys as well, but you'll always get an email response, whether you got a position or not, as well as when you successfully apply to a position. Because I strive not to have it fall off and you never hear anything. If you're in limbo, contact us and we'll let you know your status as well. Any questions for me? Yes. Yes, we do. You'll have to wait until the openings are posted. That's why doing that job alert and selecting the internships is going to be the key to it. Um, usually, it's the winter time, kind of that January time frame that I see most of them posted. Um, so do the job alert and you'll and know instantly, right when it's posted. And how long do that usually wait for? Like before next time, after you apply it, or you can only apply to one a position one time only in our system. If you have questions once you've applied, kind of feeling out where you are in the status, you can always give me a call and I'll let you know if you're in consideration. Our managers typically move quickly through resumes and they'll take each ten at a time, work through those, and we keep it going on an ongoing basis. And that is important as you're looking at different career opportunities. If you see a posting, don't wait two, three days to apply to a posting, and this is general knowledge. A lot of companies interview on an ongoing basis. So Get your information in there sooner rather than later because you don't want to miss out on an opportunity just because you didn't apply a few days earlier. Okay. Anything else?
acquired Solo recently, and they had a lot of legacy systems that we're working with, so there are some Oracle products in there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of some of those. These uh, yeah, uh, legacy systems like Catalyst and Catalyst, they both work <coughs> with management. So right now, uh, both those systems are planned at SAP. Pretty much everything we do is pre-received and order into SAP. We also have pre-received into Catalyst. And then Catalyst, mm -hmm. we usually process the incoming shipment, and then that'll get um, shot back to SAP. So uh, right now, they're kind of like mushed together and talking to each other. Um, in two years, Catalyst and Transoffer, which are our two big ones right now, um, those should both be gone from our plant, and those will be completely SAP. And then another question was asked was then what modules do you have implemented? On the SAP? Mm -hmm. oh, so we have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like alphabet soup, I imagine. Um, so right now, basically how we're doing this is we're, um, we're currently about 78% done with our American plants, as far as like SEA goes through. Um, OTC in America is done. Uh, what else do we got? We're just. So we're done. What does that mean? How many about modules? So we got OTC implemented right now. That's completely done for the Americas. Um, the engineering was done for the Americas. Uh, okay, a lot. I'm trying to think of. I'm really focused on because right now we're doing UK Brazil, so that's where my head is. And right we base now. our releases on location right. as opposed to modules. Oh. So right now we're getting ready to do the release for UK, but we have Brazil coming up and all of that fun stuff. So we're more focused on location rather than modules. Because so we'll <coughs> um, we're kind of all over the place. Is that on a single client or do you guys have multiple clients? Um, uh, oh man, I know this. Single client, single, single control area? So we, no, oh, we have multiple clients. No, we're production. Our oh, production? It's just one. It's just one. So single point, single control area or multiple? That is multiple. Multiple? Yeah. I think I have to say that pretty confident. Okay. We're just starting. We all share the same fiscal year here. Basically, basically, basically what's happening, we're doing, um, see, the only, the only time I've worked with UK and Brazil is UK and Brazil are currently doing ITC testing, and automation has never been part of ITC testing because they're only part of smoke and regression. But we're currently doing a proof of concept, and I actually got picked to do that proof of concept because I asked for it some, for some reason. Uh, so I'm the first person on our team to actually work with like UK and Brazil releases, and it's in like a completely different system right now. It's, it's struggle bus right now, so yeah. It's is the is the Brazil implementation of Portuguese or English? Portuguese. Correct? Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty funny because we found out via charm that solution industry was not compatible with Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So we got about five hundred people emailing us saying our transfer was going to be Portuguese. And we had one yes. person on the team who speaks so much of each other. I thought we had one person. Oh we had a handful. Yeah, because we have a team, we have a, yeah, at the same time they kind of say, our QA team has a team in Manila, I think. And uh, yeah, they're good, they're a good bit behind us. So when we have 8 a.m. meetings, they're about to go to bed. That's another thing, I work a lot with, uh, we work with a lot of teams like around the world. So you end up like setting up meetings at like 8 in the morning, so it's like 8 o'clock at night there, and it's just kind of a different perspective on things. Is it Lisa? Yes. Yeah, okay. Today we had a special guest speaker, um, CEO of the parade company in Detroit, and his theme was, are you all in? And it was a theme that really ran through his entire presentation of about 50 minutes, and it was motivational, leadership, that kind of thing. And he said when he came to Central Michigan, he wasn't all in, got a 1.8, his dad said, you're done. So then the story really begins from there. He goes on. And one of the things you really challenge everybody is, is are you all in? And I, I'm really impressed that Dark had people that could see that you were all in. 
I mean, it's, I'd like to hear your story of what did DART do to bring you up to speed. I mean, you got a liberal arts yeah. background. You got um, a major in a technical writing. And now you can run with these big dogs that are up there and talk techno speak. <laughs> yes, and I, you know, because I can see you're all in. Yeah. And I applaud. And I really give somebody credit on up the ladder. Whoever saw that said, "We're going to buy into this lady, and we're going to give her what she can do and make her a winner." I can see you being a CEO someday of Dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but tell me the story for everybody to hear, because it tells a lot about Dark, but. What did you do to get up to speed other than just okay. grunt work and uh, apprentice work? Yeah, um, so I think that part of that has to do with my natural <coughs> personality um, because I'm a natural born learner and with my liberal arts education, I took a lot of philosophy courses. So <laughs> don't, okay. don't be lost yet, I'll get there. But philosophy requires a lot of abstract thinking. So it's taking simple concepts that you think are simple and requiring you to be able to break those apart in your mind and see them from different perspectives. Um, so I do really credit my liberal arts education to who I am as a person because it required me to see other people's perspectives as um, different than my own. Um, so I think that's part of it. I'm also just a natural born learner and I like to know information and Paul can attest to that because I'm always forcing him to explain things to me even though I don't necessarily need to know them. Um, so I think that one of the reasons that I dug into DART is because I was given transport management as part of the QA team. And um, instead of just doing what I was required to do, I was trying to understand what it was that we were ultimately doing. So if I got a question from an end user that was like, Lisa, um, do you have an auto import job into the PI system? I would be like, well, I don't know, but I'm going to find someone who knows and I'll get back to you. And so I was able to introduce myself to so many people across IT and everyone knows me and I legitimately mean that because if I don't know the answer to the question, I'm finding someone who knows and I'm forcing them to listen to me ask questions until I get what I want. Um, so I think that, <laughs> I know that it's That's a little That's the definition of being all <laughs> Because uh, I, Within our department, um, we're, I, we didn't talk about this much, but we are a very new IT department. Um, we are definitely in our infancy stage. And IT has only become a big deal at DART within the past five years. And so with that um, comes a lot of area for growth, but also a lot of area for learning and improvement. And so for me, it was about seeing that things maybe don't always work exactly as how you want, so it's trying to understand why they don't work the way that you want and how you get to the place that you want to be. So um, for me, I feel like the way that I got all in was my connections with other people because if someone has a question for me, I just naturally want to find an answer and I also want to know why they're asking, so I'm just going to chase people down until I get an answer that satisfies me. And I also, um, and Paul again can attest to this, I also don't naturally accept the first answer you give me. If you give me an answer that doesn't seem totally legit, I'm going to ask you about 50 questions until I understand why you've given me that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody flies to the people. Um, but <laughs> I think that it's annoying for people like Paul, um, but <laughs> I think that people understand that I care about what we're working with. And the reason I'm asking 50 questions is because I want to understand so that I can back them up should they ever need it. So, um, it, and if someone's doing something that I don't necessarily agree with, I'm going to probably try to find a way to help improve it in any way I can. So to influence in any possible way. I don't know if that answers your okay. question, but, yeah. Just to speak on that, DART is a very like, new IT program. Um, I've been on the QAT because I interned there for a year. I've been full time since June. And we have, including offshore resources, we have 15 or 16 people on the team. I'm the third person in the first time. So I've been there. There's only two people who've been there longer than me. No, three people. There's three people who've been there longer than me, but one of them's only by a month. That's new. So, yeah, it's a pretty. Yeah, it just started in May. Yeah, yeah, when I got there, there were four people and we didn't have a manager anymore. So now we have a manager and a bunch of new people. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird because our team is so new. I have some experience in the automation, but like I've been full time for like four months. I'm like a 23 year old new college student, and I have like people on our team going up and being like, hey, so how do I do this? And I'm like, I've been in IT for 30 years. I don't know if I should be telling you about this. So, 
So it's a cool, it's a cool new like cool experience being like going in, you're kind of there from the beginning when they start. And just to add a little bit to that, um, another one of the things that's really great about my position and why I feel like I've been able to grow so quickly is that I have always had management, and I feel like this is typical of all of the people in IT, where I would go to them and I would say, I feel like there's an issue here in transport management, and I want to try to figure out how to make it better, and they would be like, go for it. And so I feel like our management is really open to allowing employees to kind of expand <coughs> even beyond what you technically should only be working on, because if I would have just stuck to tech writing, I don't feel like I would have expanded as far as I did, but because I said, I want to learn more about this, and my boss said, you go, girl. I was able to move up and on to bigger and better things. So then, yes, and that's a really good thing about that. They're not going to be micromanaged. Yeah. Sometimes even if they've been there 30 years, sometimes they're asking you something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Like we just took a. I just got a big email. Like, actually, because of supposed to be Bride, because in his Abba class we took that open SAP course in Fiori's. Yeah. So I mentioned that we had um, Fiori's are basically like a little mobile app. They're really cool. Um, and one of our team members went to a, like, a week-long training thing on Fiori and just talked about it. I was like, hey, we took this like online course on Fiori. And my boss was like, well, how'd you do that? And I'm like, oh, open SAP, they got a bunch of like courses. So she just sent out this big email to our whole team. It's like, hey, I was at open SAP thing. It's really cool. She also sent another page of like a bunch of um, courses you can take on just like general, like there's project management classes, things like that. She's like, hey, if you ever want to like take an hour or two out of your day to like take one of these classes online, like feel free to. Like, as long as you're getting your work done, you can like always do stuff to like better yourself or like I spend a lot of time with since I work with all the process areas, I specifically ask to work close with the SVM team because SVM interests me. So now most of my test scripts are with the SVM team. So you really do get to do a ton of stuff there. Certification that we're planning on going to Vegas in February. We <laughs> learn about high tail and pink elephants, so there's rewards as well with that. And we've we've been to uh, different plants. We've gone to uh, Lake Forest and got to see what those facilities are like. There's King Air that you can sign up for a trip and go visit anywhere. Somewhat local plants. That's a private jet. That's a private jet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like. So any more questions? I've got a couple of announcements for the crew before. Afterward, uh, the recruiters here will stay after and allow you to answer any questions that you may have for each of those individuals. Uh, registration deadline is tonight at midnight. So if you have not